Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Ato Admasu Nebebe, Director of UN Agencies and Regional Economic Cooperation Directorate, Minister of Finance and Economic Development, Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, representatives of the African Union Commission, representatives of the African Development Bank and other partners, representatives of UN agencies, representatives of diplomatic missions in Addis Ababa, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Mr. Carlos Lopez, UN Under Secretary General and Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you to the African to the Africa Regional Consultative Meeting on Sustainable Development Goals. The convening of this meeting by the Economic Commission for Africa, African Union Commission and the African Development Bank demonstrates the commitment of our respective organization in supporting member states to pursue focus and coherent action on sustainable development. This stems from our resolve to pool resources and use our comparative advantage to strive for transformative change in our societies. It is gratifying to observe the great partnership that binds our three institutions, echoing the timeless maxim of Aristotle that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Ladies and gentlemen, Africa needs productive partnerships. And our determination to, strong to, to form strong coalitions with UN agencies such as the United Nations Development Program, the United Nations De Department of Economic and Social Affairs, and the United Nations Environment Program has brought greater depth and value to our work. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to take you back to the process which underpins the Sustainable Development Goals under the auspices of the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development, Rio Plus 20, which took place in June 2012. At that conference, member states agreed to launch an intergovernmental process open to all stakeholders to develop a set of sustainable development goals. You will recall that it was agreed that the goals should be global in nature, and universally applicable to all countries while taking into account differing national realities, capacities and levels of development. The SDGs are aimed at guiding and contributing to transformative change in support of rights-based, equitable and inclusive processes that enhance sustainability at global, regional, national and local levels. As a follow-up to Rio Plus 20, the ECA, in collaboration with the AUC, the African Development Bank, and the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, organized the Africa, Rim, Africa Regional International Meeting for the 20th session of the, Common, of the Commission on Sustainable Development in November 2012 to deliberate on the main outcomes of Rio Plus 20 and its implications for Africa. The multi-stakeholder meeting adopted the Africa RIM outcome document, which serves as Africa, Africa's collective input to the UN General Assembly processes on Rio Plus 20 follow-up. The Africa RIM agreed on the need for an effective broad-based, bottom-up and consultative process to flesh out the goals, indicators, and targets that should underpin the SDGs. Underscoring the global nature of the, consult of the, of the consultation process, a UN General As Assembly open working group comprising 30 representatives nominated by member states from the five United Nations regional groups where was established on 22nd January 2013. As you are aware, the sixth joint annual meeting of the AUC Conference of Ministers of Economy and Finance and the ECA Conference of African Ministers of Finance 
planning and economic development held in March 2013 deliberated on the post-2015 development agenda and implementation of the Rio Plus 20 outcomes in Africa. Minister urged that necessary steps be taken to achieve an early convergence between the post-2015 development agenda and the Rio Plus 20 follow-up processes, particularly the SDGs towards a delivery as one United Nations development agenda. Ministers also called on the ECA, the AUC and the African Development Bank to ensure that Africa's priority are identified through the region's consultations on the post-2015 development agenda are effectively re reflected in the sustainable development goals and post-2015 agenda that are in the making. In this regard, the conference also called on three collaborating institutions to translate the African position, common position into concrete goals, indicators and targets. To build regional and international, intercontinental alliances on the African common position on the post-2015 development agenda, the African Union heads of state and governments establish a high-level committee during the summit in May 2013. In effect, the African Regional Consultative Meeting on Sustainable Development Goals will serve as an input into the HLC process of developing an African common position. It is against this backdrop that the Africa Regional Consultative Meeting on Sustainable Development Goals has been organized. Ladies and gentlemen, this African regional consultation is important as it's expected to carry the, Africa, the African voice in the global development agenda. We are relying on your vast knowledge and expertise to effectively negotiate a draft outcome document of the meeting that will be considered by your ministers on the 4th and the 5th of November. The outcome document that is expected to be adopted at the end of this meeting will purvey Africa's voice to ensure that SDGs are well aligned with the continent's sustainable development priorities and aspirations. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let us fast forward to the current realities in Africa. The, co the continent is poised on a hopeful pathway and the slogan Africa on the rise has become a recurrent headline. Africa is the world's second fastest growing region. Yet according to the World Bank, a little less than half of Africa's population will live in extreme poverty. Looking quickly at the paradoxes of our continent, Africa has around 600 million hectares of uncultivated arable land, roughly 60% of the global total. But a recent um, UN report suggested that 239 million people are hungry in Africa. 80% of Africa's agriculture is rain-fed, and outdated technologies continue to rob African farmers of opportunities to overcome poverty for good. Africa's cereal yields have shown no significant increase in 30 years. The plight of smallholder farmers need more attention and greater investment is needed to increase agricultural productivity. Let's look at another paradox. The African continent has contributed the least to the historical emissions that is creating climate change at an unprecedented and alarming rate and pace. Yet the uneven distribution of impacts of these changes mean that Africa will bear the brunt of managing climate variability and change in spite of its limited adaptive capacity. Climate change is set to derail many hard-won development gains and will result in considerable cost to people and governments with limited financial capabilities to deal with these new challenges. The world continues to watch as the severity and the frequency of climate extremes increase. In Africa, weather hazards, including floods and droughts, are creating destitute communities. The impacts of weather 
at destroying the shelter and structures that resource-dependent communities rely on, and vulnerable communities are forced to devise new coping and management strategies. The issue of water is perhaps the most vexing paradox. Our continent is rich in aquifers and transboundary rivers. Yet it's estimated that 400 million people living in Africa's 36 largest river basins experience water scarcity for at least one month each year. And this links us to the energy challenge, the challenge of clean energy for all. Africa is rich in energy resources and renewables. However, these resources are unevenly distributed. Since the 1980s, we have been talking about Africa's need for appropriate technology. Today, we must face the reality that in the context of climate change, the technology that is most appropriate for Africa is green technology. It is projected that in less than three generations, 41% of the world's youth will be Africans. It is believed that between 2010 and 2020, Africa will add an additional 163 million people to its potential labor force. By 2035, if such trends continue, the African labor force will outpace China's. In the interest of intergenerational equity, how can we draw up a new social contract that will take on this new demographic timeline from a position of enlightened self-interest. Ladies and gentlemen, let me leave you with one last paradox. Africa boasts huge natural resource wealth that should boost economic growth. Many of our resource-rich countries are riding the crest of the commodity boom. The vast wealth associated with management of extractive and natural resources is one of the reasons behind Africa's current growth trends. Indeed, the last decade, six of the world's 10 fastest growing economy were in sub-Saharan Africa, while a number of African countries consistently manage growth rates above 7%. However, economic performance over the last decade has not translated into commensurate reduction in, a, in, in, in un unemployment and poverty no significant progress towards the MDGs. Registering success on the Sustainable Development Goals will require strong and robust metric systems. Africa should also invest in specific capacities such as data collection and reporting on the newly agreed development goals. Most of the individual countries' efforts in, in attaining MDGs went unreported or could not be verified because of data paucity. Improved data availability will allow development of new indicators and improve monitoring efforts through disaggregation of reports. Our ability to sustain current growth trends depends on actions taken to address three deficits, beginning with the letter I. I for innovation as the bedrock of science and technology to meet human welfare needs and to leverage growth. I for institutions as the conduit to good governance and to optimize the capacity of policies to deliver for the maximum utility of people. And I for infrastructure as a necessary passage to take advantage of regional trade technological development and the transition to greening our economies. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we live in a perilous and unpredictable world, but the African continent gives us good reason for optimism. If sustainable development is to deliver to its fullest potential, Africa must become the hub. The lab Africa must become the hub the laboratory in which we measure the outstanding results. This is precisely because in Africa, economic and stru structural transformation is the feedstock for a sustainable development agenda. This transformation is crucial to achieving sustainable growth that will create jobs, particularly for our youth. The future we want of, is that of shared prosperity for both this generation and future generations. 
Our defiance must stem from our resolve to snuff, snuff out poverty so that it doesn't continue to claim current and future lives and result in missed opportunities. I trust, therefore, that the draft outcome documents that you will adopt in this expert segment of the meeting will effectively reflect these expectations. The world is indeed watching, and the future we want will be more achievable if sustainable development compels us to reshuffle the cards and, redistribu and redistribute the gains to our children and the future generations who, unlike us, do not have a choice in the world that we are likely to hand down to them. I thank you all, and I wish you fruitful deliberations.